Hi, I'm Marek Mularczyk from SaiTraining.co.uk, one of the UK's leading specialists in Adobe Certified Training. And this time I'm going to share with you a video tutorial on using the fantastic new Puppet Warp in Photoshop CS5. <clears throat> I know there are loads of videos about Puppet Warp online, so I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm going to show you how to take this image of a hand and manipulate it with the Puppet Warp. Something different from the usual examples that can be found online. So I've got this stock image of a hand and the first thing I need to do is I need to extract the hand from the background. This will be the first step, so I'm going to guide you step by step. So I'm going to use the quick selection tool to quickly select the hand. Okay, I'll just click and drag with the, and I've got it selected. Okay, looks good. Now I'm going to save the selection first. Okay. So I'll go to Select, Save Selection. Okay, just going to minimize that. Okay, and uh, I'm going to give it a name. I'll just call that Hand, and just press OK. So now it's saved. Okay, good. So I've saved my selection. Okay, now I'm going to put this content onto a new layer. So I can do layer, new layer via copy, or just use Control J on a PC, Command J on a Mac to put on a new layer, or I can also use Control Alt J, this will be Command Option J on a Mac to create a new layer and give it a name as well. So I'm going to call that Hand. I'll just press OK. And this puts the hand on its own layer, as you can see in here. Okay, looks good. Now I'm going to hide the hand layer for just a moment because I need to remove this hand, or at least hide it on the, on the background, because it's going to appear behind the actual hand. First, I need to unlock the background layer, so I can do it by clicking on the, this will be a tip for you, you can click on the lock icon and drag it to the bin, to unlock the background layer. And voila! Now I'm going to load the selection I've created, okay, so I go to select load selection, and I'm going to load the hand selection, and just press OK. I'm going to use the Content Aware Fill to remove this content. I also need to expand the selection just a bit. So go back to Select, Modify, and Expand. I'm going to expand it by, let's say, 20 pixels. The value here will depend on the resolution of your image. This is a high resolution image, that's why I'm using 20 pixels. I'll just press OK, and this expands my selection, because I want to have some sky here. Maybe I'll expand it even more, so I'll go back to Select, Modify, Expand, and I use an additional 20 pixels. That looks good. Now I'll go to Edit, Content Aware, um, Edit Fill, sorry. <laughs> use Content Aware, and I'll just press OK. Now Photoshop will replace the hand with the background, with the sky. In just a moment, the hand will disappear. I'm not worried too much about having a beautiful extraction. I just want to remove the hand, and I'm not going to worry too much about the background, about the sky, even if it doesn't look perfect, because I won't see the whole image, because I've got a hand in front of it. I'm more concerned about these areas here, because that's where the fingers will appear later on. This looks good. <coughs> I mean, it's okay. I'll just use Control d or Command-D to deselect it. The hand disappeared. I'm okay, I'm going to show the hand. Yeah, it looks good. Now we'll go to Edit, Puppet Warp, okay. so for this mesh, the size of, or complexity of the mesh will depend on this mode drop down menu, I'm sorry, on this density here, so if I use more points, I have more points on the mesh, I can use fewer points. One thing to bear in mind is that the more points you have, the longer it will take to render the effect. In this case, I'm going to use normal, I'm fine with that. Okay. Expansion is how many pixels from the edge your mesh will expand. Two pixels, it's fine. I don't want it to go too far outside the edge. Okay, so this looks good. Now I'm going to start adding some pins with the uh, Puppet Warp. I'm going to start here, at the top, I'll just click. Then I add another one here, because there's an angle here. So I add one more here. Maybe one more here. Then another one somewhere here. And all these fingers as well. One. 
let's see to or maybe no maybe not I'm going to remove it just a moment one more here one here this is fine and I'll add maybe two more here on the edges of the hand if you want to remove the pin you can just position your cursor over the pin and hold the alt key option key on the keyboard this changes into a scissors just click to remove it and it's gone okay now what we're going to do is we're going to click on it and drag it okay <clears throat> now what would normally happen is you can start rearranging the content so I can click and drag move it around there's the kind of effect I'm looking for but you know what this one problem when I'm done when I accept it I won't be able to edit it I will need to do it over and over again if I want to make any changes so I'm going to show you a really interesting way I'm going to cancel that okay back to original and I'm going to turn this layer into a smart object so I'll just right click on it and then convert to smart object this will save you so much time and will give you so much more flexibility okay now I'll just redo edit puppet warp and I'll add these pins so I'll start one here one here one here and here on the fingers that looks good maybe one more here okay and two more pins here and now I'll start with just now this one more thing you can do when you hold the old key option key on the keyboard and you're not directly over the pin you can actually rotate it I'm sorry, I've got this one selected. I'll just click on the pin to select it, hold the old key, and you can rotate it. Okay. We may use it in just a moment. So I'm going to start rearranging the hand. Okay, you can see how all the other parts move. Now this part doesn't move because I have the pins here and they're locked. And I'll move this one here. Start rearranging it. so far so good maybe I'll move this one a bit more and one more oops I don't want that just use control Z I'll reposition it something like that now this looks good I'll just accept it now what's going to happen is because we converted this layer to a smart object I've got a smart filters here and a puppet warp so I can hide it I can also double click on it to edit it. This is a fantastic feature. Look at that. Now you can manage these pins once again. Because you know what? I want to do one more thing. It would be nice. I'm just going to accept it for now. It would be nice if this finger was behind the thumb. It would look more natural. Of course we can do it. So I'll double click on Puppet Warp. I'll select this pin. And it's these options here. Pin Depth. I'm going to move it down or behind and now it appears behind just accept that there you go it's so easy to do and you can do it with any pin so if I double click on Papa Warp again I can go with any other pin select the pin and move it up or down one more tip for you if you want to rotate one of the pins let's say maybe this one here I'll just select it I can hold the Alt key and rotate it I can also use the rotate section here Okay. So yeah, so I can type in let's say maybe twenty degrees. Rotate it by twenty degrees. I'll just accept it. And that's how you use Puppet Warp in Photoshop CS5. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a look on more videos on my YouTube channel, Maro13, M-A-R-E-R 13. Or have a look on my blog, photoshoplightroombridge.co.uk, loads of tips and tricks in Photoshop, Lightroom and Bridge. And thank you for watching.